What's good everybody, it's your boy Abdul here from Arthur Gaming, and I know we haven't uploaded in a while, but we're back like we never left, you know, school started and everything, it's been kind of crazy, but we finally got adjusted and we promised you guys new videos, groundbreaking, meta-defining videos. Anyways guys, before I get into anything, I want to give a huge shout out to our newest patron, Rohan. Uh, thank you for your support, man, and to all our patrons and all our subscribers, everybody who leaves comments, we really appreciate what you guys do, and especially those guys who leave those comments on our Facebook in our Facebook posts, like... That stuff gets to us guys and it really shows us, it really reminds us why we do this. And it's just to, you know, spread our knowledge and, you know, meet you guys and talk to you guys. Anyway guys, today I've had a ton of requests for an updated Thunder Dragon list. And it's something that's very different from what I played before. So that's what I want to bring to you guys. You guys, remember, 5k giveaway for the Prismatic Storm Dragon's return. The best Prismatic Secret Konami's ever printed. Anyways guys, let's get right into the video. Alright guys, so we're going to get right into the profile. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different from my Montreal Regional uh, report just because I changed the deck quite a bit since then. And uh, more importantly, like, I think that like the format has shifted in a way where we're getting away from... This is really just like one insane combo deck, and that's like Orcus and its variants. And Orcus is a very poor matchup for this deck. Uh, when you go first, when you go second, you can. it's a lot easier to play through their stuff than it is when you go first. Uh, granted, they don't draw the nuts. Uh, so that's what this list has been. This list really focused on consistency and surviving through like 12 rounds of a tournament. And uh, as such, I've made, you know, some significant changes to the list. Uh, we'll get right into it, guys. I play the uh, Triple Thunder Dragon Vanilla. You have to play this. There's uh, no real need to explain, like, how powerful this card is in this deck. Uh, it doubles because of... It doubles in the usefulness because of another card that we're playing, a new card that I added, uh, just for consistency. And uh, the card's really good with Thunder Dragon Titan. It really lets us go off and pop a bunch of cards and uh, really even up the game state and to get even further ahead. And uh, one of the best uses of this card is actually under, like, Floodgates, like, there can be only one where you just tribute set it and uh, make the Colossus that way. Then we play the uh, Triple Thunder Dragon War, or Thunder Dragon Dark. You have to play this card. The card is absolutely insane. Uh, usually, just, you know, getting a search is enough to get you so far ahead in the game that you win. And it's one of the ways that we play around Appaloosa. Uh, sorry, we play around uh, Nibiru, and I'll explain that to you when we get to that section of the extra deck. And uh, the combo that I'll show you at the end of the video to play around Nibiru. So we play the Triple Dark, and the same way we play the uh, Triple Thunder Dragon Roar. Uh, Roar, I talked about before. Uh, he's insane for his recursion ability. His discard effect lets you add a Banished Thunder card or a or a Thunder card that's in your graveyard. So you always get to add back Fusion, get to add back Duo, add back Vanilla if you need to, Hawk, whatever you need. And uh, also he just lets you summon from deck, which is one way we can that helps us ladder into some of the more powerful Link plays that our deck has access to. And again, it synergizes with another card that we put in. The next Thunder Dragon that we play is the Triple Thunder Dragon Hawk. This card's nuts. You have to play this card at 3. I don't want to hear any argument for this card at 2. It is like the premier hand effect in this deck, just because it puts a body on board. Well, also it fulfills a requirement for Colossus essentially on its own, uh, and it really loses the one hand trap, and that's Ghost Bell because it doesn't target the card, so it dodges like DD Crow and stuff like that. Uh, Hawk is insane, also for just this Mulligan effect. Like sometimes post side you might draw some breaks or you might draw some poor cards, and Hawk lets you fix your hand for that. But really, we're just using this for its hand effect. I won't go too much into it because I have a tendency to talk too much about cards. But uh, yeah, Triple Hawk again, Triple Matrix. Uh, I think three is correct. Over two, um, we play Desires, we play other cards like that. And the Matrix is insane. You, usually, drawing this in your opening hand is not terrible. And it's you just want to get to Colossus. That's that's the goal. If you get to Colossus, you know, it, it does help you play around a lot of stuff. And the Luminite deck, like, if they have cards like, you know, their search cards would be like a discard for danger for, like, Perfume or, like, uh, a Tanky. Like, it does stop that a lot more. And if Orcus is playing the Striker Package, it does also prevent Orcus from doing its job. Again, Cyber Dragon Orcus, you know, if you open this plus Hawk, you're making Colossus in the main monster zone, and it just stops them from uh, being able to access their core search, being able to access, like, uh, Cyber Emergency, and other similar search cards like that. Um, the card's also really good, and just being able to use a hand effect for Titan to be able to really open up the game state is really insane. And it's, uh, our t this deck is a lot more Titan focused now with the, uh, the new hand trap changes and all that, like with the promo cards. Uh, let me play the uh, one uh, Thunder Dragon Duo. Again, you could play two. You could play some other stuff. Like I, I've seen lists that play Oblivion here, but like this card is just great just because you can search it off Dark. Uh, you can recur it very easily with Roar. You can even hawk it back if you summon it correctly the first time. And uh, it triggers multiple Thunder Dragon effects. Gives you a search. Also 28 meter, which can, with one hand effect, usually you can swing over other problem cards like in the Mirror Match if they make their BLS Link to out your board. Duo just deals with the BS Link. BLS Link on its own usually. Um, the card is insane. Like You can play multiple copies. I just think that like one, I've always only needed one and uh, it's only really been great, like, it's re only really insane when you, like, top deck this card, so for that instance, like, one is fine, you get it when you need it, basically. Uh, that's all for the Thunder Dragon monster that we play. This ratio has not changed for my Montreal list, so if you guys want to take a look at that, uh, the link should be somewhere down in the description, or you guys can just check back on the channel. Uh, this ratio is perfect. I don't think I would change anything, and I don't think there's ever a reason to change anything. 
Duel could be bumped, but I didn't want to sacrifice. Other consistency, we play the uh, Triple Battery Man Solar. This is actually one of the ways that we play around Nibiru. And uh, on the similar vein, we also play around Nibiru with Duo just being able to make a Thunder Dragon. Uh, Colossus after the fact. Uh, solar, just opening Solar plus Hawk lets you do so much. Before it was like, you know, you make the full board of Double Colossus Titan. You know, we're never doing that. We're always just making a single Colossus, a single Titan. But now we can also, it lets us go into the Appaloosa line. And uh, that just lets us, that just prevents us from losing to... Uh, Nibiru, and it also prevents us from losing to Orcus because if you go first and you have Appaloosa, a bunch of negates, this card's nuts, and it just helps us link ladder and it just puts more bodies on board just to be able to like press our advantage and to push for game. Uh, joining Solar, and I wasn't playing this card before, is the double aloof Lupine. Now, Lupine is very powerful in the sense that it usually guarantees you Colossus by itself and it combos very well with any Thunder in hand. Like, any, if you draw Lupine plus any of these Thunders, you have Colossus. If you draw Lupine with like Thunder Dragon, like you go pitch Thunder Dragon, add two of these to your hand. Banish one for Lupine, banish a Dark or a Roar, and you can just continue your lines from there. It lets us play under Nibiru because we can make our Colossus without our fourth summon, and uh, just back up our Colossus with powerful cards, and um, that's why this card is insane. Uh, not only that, it helps you play under Floodgates, like there can be only one, it's another Dark for a Lure of Darkness, which sometimes comes up. And uh, more importantly, just when it gets when it gets destroyed by battle or like card effect, you just get to add a banish card back, so you can crash this. 17 is relevant, man, that's what, like I'm telling you, 17 is relevant. Uh, but more importantly, if you open if you open this with like Roar, you can like Aloof Lupine banish the Roar, Banish the Dark. It's another consistency card. Uh, really, we are playing five normal summons. I don't really count Matrix. It's really a worst case normal summon, but we are playing five normal summons, which is the sweet spot for me. And this is just another way to get to Colossus under five summons. And uh, it just lets you combo with, uh, it lets you like set up a lot of powerful lines and a lot of powerful plays. And it's very powerful uh, when you draw it without something like Hawk. Like Solar really only combos with Hawk, whereas Lupine combos with every single Thunder Dragon card. The thing is that Solar combos so well with Hawk and it lets us play under Lancia that like, I, I prioritize the Solar over the Lupine. So that's it for the monsters. We're playing no hand traps. Uh, I just really wanted to focus on the consistency of the deck and I was running into issues where oftentimes I was losing games just because I would open like Phantasmes and Ash Blossoms and stuff and like that's fine to stop your opponent but like it doesn't actually do the most. And um, a bigger issue I was finding really is that Phantasme helps your Striker match quite a bit but a Striker has lost a lot of popularity and Thunder also just demolishes that deck so it wasn't really an issue for me. Um, and just like... What hand trap really stops the combo decks currently? It's not Ash, they can usually play through it. If they have the Call by the Grave, you just wasted a card. So it's like, you just want to have more live cards and more ways to play. And you don't want to brick on those hand traps, like, in a tournament setting. Like, you know, you're playing six, seven rounds, like, day one. And you just want to get through the day, you know, end with, like, your undefeated record or whatever. And you just want your deck to hold up. And, like, with playing, like, no hand traps and just, like, playing maximizing out on the consistency cards, like these ones and some other ones I'll show you, it just guarantees that you can always play. And Thunder Dragon is very similar to Salamangrate in the sense that if you get to turn two, you usually win the game just because you can grind and out-resource most opponents as long as you're smart with your, uh, with your recycles, with the fusion and stuff. And uh, so I decided not to go with all the hand traps I was playing, I was playing before. If you guys remember, I was playing uh, Triple Phantasm, a Triple Ash Blossom, and uh, two Ghost Ogre. I decided to just cut the Ash Blossoms and cut the Ghost Ogres and cut the Phantasmes for more consistency cards, but also for cards that are super, super, super powerful against decks like Orcus going first. And uh, decks like, you know, the Mirror going first, decks like uh, Lunal Light Orcus and Cyber Dread, all those crazy combo decks that are out there right now. And just like, also cards that just help you dominate the control matchup even more so. Uh, so that's it for the monster count, guys. No hand traps again. So every single monster that we see is usually a live card or combos with a bunch of other cards. Uh, to go with that, I play the uh, Double Thunder Dragon Fusion. Uh, I know I wanted to, I talked about like bumping up to three. I don't think you need to. Uh, just because like your fusions are like as good as as good as this card is uh, because you have like lupine it actually makes this card better like it's e it's better to search for this card than it's just hard draw it's because you want to see a thunder like monster in your hand and i wanted to keep the card uh, the deck as close to 40 as possible um so basically you'll lupine you'll use dark to uh, search this out and like if you have some another way to like combo you can just get into the uh the the uh the Thunder, the Thunder Dragon Colossus. And so uh, the Thunder Dragon Fusion is just really just used for its recyclability. This is how we go infinite against a lot of decks. And this is like the big, this is like a bomb card. Like, this is a card that you always want to see. We don't play the one just because, you know, we risk banishing off desires. I mean, you usually want to see two fusions in our deck anyway. Um, you could play three. Again, it's just like a dead card when you open it in your hand, which is one of the issues that I have with it. It is also another way we play around Nibiru. So, you know, multiple, playing multiple copies just increase our odds to see it. But we don't want to see this card in multiples or ever really uh, when we go second, for example. So just two fusion, I don't need to explain it too much more than that. One gold star, gold star's huge power card. Also a giant consistency card, and uh, it just lets us like get our lines going, and like we can do stuff like gold star a card that we really wouldn't want in our hand, like post side, crash the lupine, add the monster back to our hand. Like there's some like spicy stuff you can do with it, but really it's just there like hand fix and just you know get us our monsters on board to continue our lines of play. And then in the same vein, the triple allure of darkness. Uh, again, I sometimes you know people have told me that like 
you know, I want to cut Lurch 2, I want to play uh, just because like I don't have enough darks, so I really only have two good targets, and that's the, the roar and the dark. But it's like this card is so insane. Like, and when this card resolves, when you have like a dark or a roar in your hand, it just feels like you're unstoppable and you can't lose that game. So it's like you need to play Lord of Darkness. Uh, again, another consistency card. That's the theme of the deck, guys. Consistency, make our Colossus, make our Titan, make our Appaloosa, and never lose the game. Same thing. Uh, Instant Fusion. Instant Fusion also doubles as a hand trap, uh, or a hand trap like going second is a board breaker card because we play Thousand Eyes Trick. Uh, so this card's really good. Also, it acts as another copy of a Loof Lupine. So like we have like five normal summons that we want, and we have like five essentially versions of a Loof Lupine to uh, fix our hands, get into our Titan plays, play our Nibiru because like post after you Nibiru, after you get Nibiru, you can just like instant fusion and make the fusion card uh, go into your Titan. Now you have like a Titan and a giant ass token, so you can't lose. Uh, and also the card's just not this card's broken. Like there's so many games you win just because you open instant fusion. It's an answer to the window lock, and it's also an answer to a lot of problem cards that you can't deal with. And uh, it's usually baits like removal going second, so it's like a one for one. And if they let it resolve, it's like an insane one for one. If they negate the activation, you can always just play the set. You can always activate a second copy if you have it. Uh, so this card is absolutely ridiculous. At one point, I wasn't playing this card, but it's just overperformed in every instance that I've had it. And I've just decided that I want to see this card, whether I go first, whether I go second. Now we're going to go into our consistency spell. More of our consistency spells. We play the triple pot of desires. Before I was playing two. You don't. You do not want to break in this deck. You want to see all your Thunder Dragon cards. You want to see like your pieces just to be able to make your play, and this just lets you do that. Uh, we play a heavier trap count than normal, so this helps us get to our trap cards. And not just that, it's just again one of the best cards in the game. Like this is this is pot of greed essentially in our deck and decks like ours. This is pot of greed. I don't care about the ten cards I banish because after I do my combo or. Like, think of it this way, right? After you do your combo, you won't need the desires, but you can desires for extra gas. If you don't have your combo, you're gonna wish that you had desires in your hand to get you to your combo. In a similar vein, we play Upstart Goblin. So we're playing a, like a 39 card deck, essentially. Like, when you play desires, you take two more cards out of your deck. Like, we're playing like 36 cards in our deck, guys. Like, it's super, 36, that's not math, but you know what I'm saying. We play a lot of consistency cards and like all our spells essentially like facilitate our like, our win condition, which is getting to our like Colossus and getting to our fusions. And that's, really the goal in this deck is just get to your fusions and your fusions will carry you, uh, especially through like a longer tournament. And that's the goal here, right? We have like a regional season like upon us guys, OTS championships are having are happening and you really just want to get your invite. And you know, the way you get your invite is to play a consistent deck that will just let you a let you play every single match pre and post side. And uh, that's why these cards are insane. Just like never break, always have combo, always be able to play and uh, you know, blow our opponent out of the water. Uh, this is the only hand trap we make. It's the uh, triple infinite impermanence. Just because this is the only hand trap, like the Lunalite Orcus deck is making Azathoth, so all your monster based hand traps like Nibiru, Phantasme, Ash Blossom, and the like are just dead. But this card is never dead. You can't call by the grave. This is only one way to play around this card, essentially, and that is Eagle Booster. And if they have the booster and they hard drew the booster or they search the booster and you just have Imperm as your as your uh, negate, that's fine. You just let them do their play and then, like, you can Imperm their uh, Dengir so it can't protect, or you can Imperm, like, another card just so they can't, like, or, like, Imperm and negate. Uh, it's also the best hand trap to draw as the sixth card, essentially, just because it's live. You can play it, you know, beta negate or trade one for one with a negate. In the mirror match, being able to negate a Colossus or a Titan lets you really play. Uh, Appalo it just stops Appaloosa, stops all problem cards like that. So it was the only hand trap that I could justify playing in the main. I believe it's the best hand trap just because of its utility and just be able just because it's like almost always live and it's very hard for your opponent to play, uh, play through. And if you go first, you can just set this card and just have another negate for free, essentially. Uh, that you they can't call by the grave, they can't as a thought, they can't like interact with it, they can't chain block this card. It just says no. Uh, so impermanence is the only hand trap that made the cut in the main, and uh, you know I've had no regrets playing it. And we play Solemn Strike. This card is insane, you know, because like people just aren't playing this card anymore, and they're not respecting the card, and they're not playing around the card, especially when you're playing Thunder Dragon. You don't expect them to strike. They set a card, you, you know, you have the read as it's impermanence or so desires, maybe they bluffed or something like that, and then they run into a strike and they win. This card is insane against Solomon Greats. It's again insane against Sky Striker. Insane in the mirror, insane against Orcus. Orcus is like a very linear deck, even Cyber Dragon, Orcus, and Lunalite. So like, you know, you can really just solve the card that you really need to resolve. Um, and it's usually just game from there. And so seeing Strike in multiple copies is insane. And like, I took the risk of, you know what, if I go second, I can naturally play through like my opponent's board and my Thunder Dragon monsters. I can, and you know, I have the impermanence to be able to negate stuff. And if I can just reestablish my board and play through their board, I can uh, stop the Dingirsu. I can like, uh, like strand the symbol skeleton. I can just strand the, the Orcus card. So it's just another way to beat Orcus and to play through Orcus. Also, like if you strike the uh, Striker Link, like you don't have to, like they're not gonna get Ray. So they have to have a way to access Ray, which is either just hard drawing Ray or like multi rolling with a field spell. And uh, if you spent your turn and you didn't out the multi roll, you probably did it wrong. Uh, this is just a card that has like essentially zero counterplay to. And that's what we want. We want Solemn Strike. We want cards that are just, if I resolve this card, I'll probably win the game. Now I understand in, into an established board, it's not the greatest thing, but 
against like decks like Orcus, like Pure or Orcus, like Lunalite Orcus, and like decks like that. Like just being able to like your opponent activates effect, strike, Boral Sword, strike, Boral Load, strike. Literally everything, strike. And so it's just a card that you know your opponent can't deal with. And I, I even want to play Compulse on this deck. That's how insane I think trap cards are currently. And this is one of those trap cards that just like really my eyes have opened up to just how powerful it is. And if we go Colossus Strike Pass, like most decks can't play through that. You go Titan Strike Pass, most decks can't play through that. Colossus Titan Strike Pass, most decks can't play. Again, now you go like Appaloosa Strike and like Titan, like who's playing through that? Nobody. Like Mystic Mind Burn maybe, but who cares? Again, you'll notice we're not playing any main deck outs to cards like Mystic Mind. Most Floodgates we can play through naturally with just our Thunder Dragon cards, and like Impermanence has the added benefit of being able to set in the same columns of Floodgate and negate it. But most of those Floodgates we don't have to problem. We don't have a way to deal with them in the main deck. That's okay. That's what the sideboard's for. You play, you know, you get to game three, use your side deck, win the game because of that. So you don't need to be maining them. You know, you take that calculated risk of if I play against those decks, you know what, game one might be tough, but. If I don't lose game one, it's going to be very hard for my opponent to win the game. Just because once that side, once that sideboard comes in, like you've already teched your deck so much that like there's no way you're going to lose at that point. So again, I don't respect mine. I don't respect floodgates. I think that at a at a higher level event, like if you run into those cards and those and you have no way to play against around them, you got very unlucky. And you know what? That's variance that happens sometimes. But we can't, you know, we we shouldn't account for like low percentage situations. These are all just cards that help us win against the best decks in the game and help us grind out. And always win the game. That's what, that's what Strike's really good at. And the grind game, the cards are ridiculous. Uh, so that's the main deck, guys. 39 cards, 40 cards, count up, start. Super consistent. Always sees combo. If you open a Strike, great. Your opponent can never play the game ever. So we'll go right into the extra deck, guys. 15 cards. Uh, we play the uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict. A card is insane. I don't need to explain this card too much. But just going first, going second, it's a way to add a lot of cards. Uh, it's also a way to just deal with problem monsters. Oh, another point about Nibiru, right? Is that if Orcus is playing Ibli and they open the Ibli, it's really hard for you to deal with it. Because first of all, you can't Nibiru them, which means you have a dead card in your hand. And uh, second of all, like, you can't deal with it because you have, you have Nibiru in your hand that gave you a play. So I, I'm not too, I'm not the greatest fan of that card in the main deck. It's definitely a spot on the side deck. Uh, so anyways, Thousand Eyes Strike, insane. Going second, just being able to remove a threat uh, is just ridiculous. In the mirror match, it makes instant fusion out of everything. Uh, it's a way to deal with Inspector Border and other cards like that that say no no fun for you. you. So like, this card's broken. Uh, we play it because we play instant. It's like a staple. Uh, Kaminari attack. This is the way we get into our fusions. It's another way to really, you know, boost our consistency in our deck because we can summon the Kaminari, then banish a thunder and go into our uh, fusion plays and, and like that and just like continue to combo and continue to extend. Uh, with solar, it helps us make Appaloosa and the like. And so the card is just broken uh, just because it's a thunder. They can instant fusion out. It doesn't have a real effect. Uh, so we'll go into, so then now the obvious inclusions, right? Is the triple Colossus and the triple Titan. Uh, I think that you could get away with playing two Titans, but I think three is absolutely correct. You want to be able to just shuffle back like main deck monsters with your Thunder Dragon fusion, and you really don't want to have to be shuffling back a Titan every single time you do it. You want to like shuffle, if you have to shuffle back an extra deck monster, it's usually the Colossus. So you want to be able to shuffle back like a Colossus, like Aurora and a Hawk, and just like increase your odds of consistency and increase your odds of grinding out. And that's where the third uh, Titan really comes up. The game slowed down a lot, like with the exception of like one or two decks. And uh, the three Titans come into play quite a bit. And just be, just having access to it, it's like a safety net, safety valve. And like in the mirror, like if you play three and they play two, and like it gets to the really deep grind game, and you can like deny a lot of resources to your, from your opponent with like a Colossus, you establish your Titan, you just kind of win the game. It also lets you be a lot more liberal with your first Titan because you can just link it away, knowing that you have two more and you don't have to shuffle it back. So that's it for the fusions we play. We play the standard eight guys. We play the triple Titan, triple Colossus. This is broken. You have to, you have to play this ratio for sure. Um, you can cut the Titans to two. I, I disagree with that, but whatever. Uh, the one link Rebo when we open up the. Uh, the level one uh, dragon matrix and it just lets us combo lets us play and like after like it also lets you dodge like cards too because you can like normal the matrix they activate widow anchor to try to deny you a colossus you just tribute it off for link Rebo and you just trade it for an anchor but it's really just there for the utility that it provides and we have tons of space in the extra deck uh one nightmare phoenix main deck out to floodgates because we can get through to him pretty easily with like if you go aloof like banish uh roar summon dark one to phoenix channel one phoenix channel too dark pop the dark chameleon one things like that like uh it's just i'm not gonna spend too much time talking about phoenix i always do this uh, the Sun Summer Summoner, uh, we only play the one. Two does come up every now and then, but like if you just manage your resources properly, just kill your opponent before the second one ever becomes relevant. Uh, this card is really powerful. I only usually go into it as like it, as a last resort kind of thing. So it's like when the board I'm making, so usually I make one fusion, at, I like turn one with a bunch of other stuff, but with Sun Summer Summoner, like you don't you don't need this to make that one fusion, right? You can just do other plays. But it's really good when uh, you're pushing for game or you, you have a read on what your opponent has and you just make the third clauses with it. Uh, then we play the second generic link too, my favorite link in the, in the game, Cypher and Lord Lambda. 
This is the card I always make, like just because it's so generic, it's so powerful, and there's there's ways to play around a beer with Lambda based on your hand and stuff, and I'll explain that to you guys when I show you the combo. Um, Lambda's nuts, play this card, 1700 attack, kills Kaina. Uh, Nightmare Unicorn, again, another way to deal with problematic back row, you can ladder your Phoenix into your Unicorn, deal with two cards, load up your Graveyard. Uh, yeah, not much to say, it deals with Colossus in the Mirror Match, which is pretty powerful, pretty useful. Also it deals with Ingirsu, which is more and more relevant now, so yeah, card's busted. Um, the BLS Link, one of the boss monsters of our deck. And one of the reasons to play the deck is just how easy we can summon this guy and just have him with his immunity to card effects, immunity to destruction, and all that. Uh, this is this card is nuts. This is our win condition against Sky Striker. It's also a win condition in many ways against Salamangrate. In the mirror match, like, you know, if you've exhausted their duel and they don't have a way to get to duel, this is really hard for them to deal with as well. Just because 3k attack is a lot of attack. Card's broken. And then we play Appaloosa, the new girl. Uh, this was previously Boralode, but I summoned Boralode once every like thousand games so this just wasn't worth it uh, not once every thousand i don't play that many games but appaloosa is nuts because if you go first this is how you stop orcus this is how you stop a lot of those decks that can naturally play through your stuff just because you get a bunch of free negates that can stop their initial lines and like if you back it with a strike you can't lose you back it with a titan a colossus it's really hard to lose that game this card is absolutely ridiculous and most importantly let's just play around a beer and i'll show you guys what i mean by that and I just don't understand this card. Is, this card is like three negates usually, four negates sometimes, and uh, you know four negates plus a Colossus, three negates plus a Titan. How's your opponent deal with that? Uh, so that's it for the uh, extra deck. Just quickly, I'll just describe what the side could look like, like just potential options. Again, I've said it all the time. The side is incumbent. The side is dependent on like what your people are playing, like at your locals, at your regional level, like you know the YCSL. It really depends on what the meta is. But you can play cards like No Materials, cards insane against Unlight Orcus guys. You know, you No know Material, the Nyarla, they really can't play the game. Uh, so Gnome is an option, the Biru is an option, Lancey is an option. You know, they all just can fit into the slot. Uh, Twin Twisters, because we're not main decking the back row hate. So like, you know, uh, we really decided. The card is broken. This is an S tier card in most back row matchups. If you see it, you win the game. You play cards like Mind Control. Mind Control is insane against Sky Striker. This, this card is even more insane against Salamangre. It's even more insane in the mirror match. So you play cards like that. Evenly, this is Thunder Dragons. We don't leave up floodgates, like, or we don't leave up like field spells and continuous spells or continuous traps to just kind of linger on the board. Once our board gets outed, usually we just get wiped entirely. So Evenly is always live, even if we try it like as a top deck and not as a, not like going second, um, like in, in our opening hand. So this card is broken. This is how we beat the floodgate decks. This is how we beat the back row decks. So you evenly them, you twin them, you just win the game. Nice and easy. You know, powerful floodgate one ofs like Macrocosmos and Imperial Order. If you see these cards, you win the game. That's why you play them. So it's like this card, these cards are like strike in the sense that like if it resolves, you're probably gonna win. And this is even more like powerful than Solemn Strike. So these cards are nuts. This is how we beat Striker, this is how we beat everything. Literally everything. And then the one mega fleet, it's another card you guys should be playing in your side deck, just because or your main extra deck. Um I didn't, I'm not playing it here, but like just to give you an example, like you can fit this in. It's very easy to put this in. But like the Mega Fleet just deals with Cyber Dragon Orcus. It in some instances, you know, like it deals with pure Cyber Dragon or like the Glow Second combo decks. Like this just deals with like against Cyber Dragon Orcus, they go off, they do full combo. The guy's feeling so good, and you just Mega Fleet him, pitch Thunder Dragon, tribute summon, make the Thunder, make the Colossus, and your opponent's saying they're like, oh man, that's not for that's not that's very unfortunate. You can also just leave it in the extra monster zone. And uh, they can't contact it because you can't be used as fusion material. Also, it's got like 7,000 stars, which means you can make BLS Link with it. And then BLS Link is immune to everything. This card is ridiculous. So yeah, that was it for the side, guys. I'm going to show you a quick combo on how we play around Apple, how we play around Nibiru, which is like your standard opening. Like, you know, the, the ideal, super basic, guys, the ideal opening that everybody kind of wants. Like, you know what? This was it. Before, like, oh, that's not the card. This was it because before people would see this, like, this is your hand. And then you have three blank cards, blanks don't matter. And they would say, this is the perfect Thunder Dragon hand. Just like, you know, you have your full combo. And I'm gonna show you guys what, we, what we're gonna do now. So you're gonna start your line with, you know, I'm from the solar, activate solar's effect, send Thunder Dragon Roar from your deck to the graveyard. At this point, we're gonna pitch Thunder Dragon Hawk to the graveyard, and we're gonna special summon our Dragon Roar. Solar will trigger summoning a Thunder Token. Boom, right over here. Now we can count our summons. Normal summon solar, one summon. Dragon Hawk bringing out Roar, two summons. Summoning out the token, three summons. Our fourth summon is going, is going to be a link summon of some summer summoner. We're going to link off the roar and the token into summer guide. This is our fourth summon. Now roar is going to trigger and summon dark from our deck. Dark is our fifth summon. Now this is there's a reason why we didn't make the lambda here. If we get Nibiru'd here on our fifth summon, which no one's going to do, but if we get Nibiru'd here, we're gonna get a token, 
and a dark will trigger and searches another Thunder Dragon card. So Thunder Dragon Fusion, Thunder Dragon Duo, things like that. And then we can just link this and the token, use another extender. We can go into our, our Lambda. Our Lambda is still alive. But if we made Lambda here first and then we got Nibiru, we wouldn't be able to use the token for something. So anyways, we'll just rewind. So this is where we're at. This is our fifth summon. Nobody is going to Nibiru you here. If they do, you know what, a little unfortunate, but even then you can just search the fusion and you can just make your Titan pass on your Titan. You still have three cards in hand, so you'll still be able to play realistically. Now, the next thing we do is we're gonna link everything away into Appaloosa. Now is gonna be used, uh, three materials will have been used to go into Appaloosa, triggering our Thunder Dragon Dark. So Appaloosa 2400 attack with three negates. At this point, you'll search Thunder Dragon Fusion, Add fusion to your hand. You know, we're gonna activate the fusion. We'll shuffle back our thunder guys right here. And we'll summon Big Daddy, Thunder Dragon Titan. At this point, your board is Appaloosa Titan. You got fusion engrave and three cards in hand. Like that was all done with the solar combo. It lets us play around Nibiru. And this is a stronger board against Orcus than like Double Colossus Titan is. Uh, if you have any other extender in your hand, like, or if you have other ways to play, like you have a gold sarcophagus, things like that. You have like, you know, a, uh, Thunder Dragon Duel in your hand, anything like that, and we can just end on one more card. But this is so this is so powerful because like my idea with it, like if you open Thunder Dragon, we just make a Colossus here instead. My idea with the deck was always just go like you know Lambda Fusion Pass or you know Link Two Fusion Pass and like just sit on hand traps and stuff. And this is like three hand traps. Why those three negates and Titan protects it because like this is they're never going to be able to get a battle phase because Titan's going to pop anything else but the Appaloosa. And so against like against Striker you don't make this. You just make multiple Colossuses. But like in this instance, like you can't get Nibiru, you're gonna negate the Nibiru. And then you have tight, they have the Orcus player, which is our worst matchup, apparently, have to play through Appaloosa and Titan. And that was it. Now, like the rest of the hand is like largely irrelevant. Like you open triple strike, like who's playing through this? Nobody's playing through this. I don't gotta talk about this. Anyways, guys, that was it for the profile. I showed you guys a really quick combo. Um, if you notice, I'm not playing dimensional shifter. And the reason for that is I don't believe that Dimensional Shifter is all that fantastic. I understand that when you have it in your opening hand and it resolves, it's very hard to lose the game. But that card is super feast and fat, a feast or famine for me. And another issue with Shifter is oftentimes it doesn't leave you material in the grave to protect your Colossuses with and your fusions with. And that's one of the best reasons to play this deck is because it's so hard to deal with your monsters. So yes, I guess it does hurt your opponent. I understand that. It's the worst top deck in the game. And like when you're playing a grindy deck like Thunder Dragon, pure Thunder Dragon is a grind deck, make no mistake about it, the card is just a dead card. If you're really that scared about decks like Orcus, you can play Land Seal, which is live no matter which turn you draw it, essentially. You know, you can play cards like No Material, which again is only live turn one, but like it doesn't stop your graveyard from like, you know, working, and it still just shuts your opponent up because they're stuck on Nyarla or whatever else it is. Even Ash Blossom, like the, the card is just too niche in its uses. Like, yes, when it resolves, it feels great, but Feast or Famine, if we're gonna play a Feast or Famine deck, we'd be playing like, what is it, Guard Dragon FDK and not Pure Thunder, which is why I personally don't like it. You guys are more than free to play it. It's just not something that I'm really that interested in. Uh, Dark Ruler No More, again, like what combo deck is really going off that can't, doesn't have an answer to Dark Ruler No More. Like Orcus just, or Lunar Orcus just hits you with the Crescendo, or uh, hits you with the Crescendo, hits you with Eradicator, hits you with, uh, what is it, Imperial Order, like, Cyber Dragon, Orcus, Crescendo, like, it's just not that great against those combo decks, and it's just dead against everything else, except the mirror match. But in the mirror, we play cards like Infinite Impermanence, we play like Instant Fusion, post side, you can side into your Arnabirus, and just crazy stuff like that, and like, or whatever else you need to play, so it's, it's just not that great, it doesn't have the same level of coverage. Anyways, guys, that was my Thunder Dragon video, guys, a little bit of an update, show you guys where we're at now, what we think about the promos, the new stuff. We got tons of content on the way, guys, remember to subscribe for 5k, we got Prismatic Storm Dragon Turn giveaway, let us know what video you guys want to see next, guys. Anyways, guys. Dilla from Athlete Gaming signing out. Peace.